everyone. It's uh, really exciting to see so many people here today at Science for March. Um, so I'm one of those passionate scientists who's going to try to get you excited about chemistry um, by telling you about some of the magical components that go into what I get to do on a daily basis. So uh, how many of you are into superheroes? I know a lot of the kids, just raise a hand, you know, super, Superman, Wonder Woman, these types of things. What if I were to tell you that the elements that I work with on an everyday basis have their own unique superpowers? You just might not be able to see them. But I, as a modern day alchemist, I have the opportunity to see these powers come to life in the lab. So I'm gonna try to tell you some of those stories today. But first and foremost, I just wanna give a shout out to the periodic table, because you know I'm a chemist. And uh, for those of you who don't know, it is the international year of the periodic table. So it's 150 years since this got put together. Um, and so I'm going to kind of have some fun with it and with you guys, hopefully. So does, uh, does anyone like to read their horoscopes in the audience? Anyone, anyone? <laughs> Just for fun, you know, check out your star sign. Any Pisces in here? <laughs> well, today, you guys are lucky because I'm going to read your chemistry horoscope. So do I have any volunteers who want to want to try this out? You there. OK, OK, so this is what we have to do. So some of the adults might be a little embarrassed. So how old are you? You are 11. Well, well, well. So what is your name? Sophia. Sophia, 11 years old. It is your year of sodium. So these are, this is what you should do. Beware of water. <laughs> you may experience a risk of flames. Also, make sure you put some salt. Keep that salt in your diet. It's good for you. <laughs> Any other takers? Any other takers? I see the shy one behind there raising his hand. You? Uh, I'm 15, Tostin. Ta yeah. Your name is Tostin? 15? Well, Tostin, it is your year of, what? Phosphorus. And that's a good one. So beware, because you might end up with fossy jaw. And this is a very serious deficiency. So beware of the element of phosphorus. It's very pure. But it might allow you to glow in the dark. So you might have some amazing nighttime discoveries. <laughs> OK, one more, one more. Any of the brave adults willing to risk revealing their ages? Are you there? How old are you on this fine day? 44. 44. Oh, wow. That is a beautiful one. What's your name? Alma. 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 It is your year of ruthenium. Now, ruthenium is a cool metal because I don't know if you knew this, but it is used to bring with these two things called alkenes together. So you are going to help to bring together people. And they are going to engage in very exciting and positive reactions together. I also sense that there could be some colors going on in your life, because these co complexes are very colorful. So you are a, cat you are a catalyzer of community. <laughs> so that's some fun. I thought, thought we'd lighten things up. <laughs> so if, it, if any of you would like, uh, didn't get a chance, you can come find me after and I'll, I'll try to give you a horoscope read before you go home today. Um, so moving on. So I'm going to tell you about some of the superheroes that I've encountered in the lab. So uh, I did my PhD on palladium. And so if you didn't know, people don't tell you this, but palladium is the goddess of transition metals. And so it's named after the goddess Pal uh, Pallas Athena, which in Greek mythology comes from the goddess of war and wisdom. And in that sense, I have observed these characteristics in working with, with her in the lab. So one of the things I also do as a chemist is when I do a reaction, I try to understand the stories that happen. How, how do these transformations occur? And so sometimes we, us as chemists, we draw these kind of hieroglyphic looking things to try, to try to tell the story about how this transformation is occurring. So in the case of this, as you can see, palladium likes to go on. You don't have to understand what's up here. What you should take away is that palladium likes to go on bond-forming adventures. 
And you know, sometimes you need a, a certain, you need a companion, a sidekick to accompany you to do different things. Maybe you have to fight goblins. Maybe you just want to dress up and go to a ball. Well, Palladium can take these things called ligands who can advise her on her bond forming adventures. So that's one cool, once one cool element that's very powerful. Another, uh, another element that maybe you didn't know about, but nickel was called the spirited horse of catalysis by uh, Sabatier, who won the Nobel Prize in 1901. And why do you ask, is that the case? Well, that's because nickel tends to be kind of reactive. It's very wild, and you have to like domesticate it and tame it so you can get it to do the things that you want it to do. And so uh, in the group I work in right now, which is the Reisman lab, they work a lot on trying to use these cool little ligands to kind of tame this wild stallion so they can do these cool types of reactions. They look kind of cool, as you can see. Just think of them from an art perspective. And as you can also see, nickel is so wild, it creates these crazy colors when you expose it to water. Um, so another element that I've had the opportunity to work with recently and during my postdoc has been copper. And copper has a really interesting story. There's a lot of mysticism. It's often been associated with the planet Venus. And there's been associations with Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty. And I have experienced some of this love, also some of the, some of the fickleness that comes with love in the lab. <laughs> and I have seen her try to match make my reaction. So I've been working on this type of reaction here. So imagine, you know, you're, you're this like very radical, fiery, fiery being, and you're trying to get together with this other reagent. You need someone to help make that happen. Well, Copper tries to help out, and she, she sees that you might be on a different time frame. And she tries to get you together. And so that's what Copper has been trying to do for this reaction for me. She's been trying to take these two things that run at different paces and put them together to do something fun and magical. So don't forget about Copper, the goddess of love. Uh, finally, I'm starting to work with uh, vanadium, uh, which was named at from the Scandinavian goddess Vanadis, who, if you know anything about Norse mythology, uh, Freya, it, it, also known as Vanadis, is a powerful goddess. She's the goddess of death, love, sex, fertility, so all these really crazy things. And she, her, the complexes that vanadium makes are just as potent. And so this is one of the complexes that I will be working with. As you can see, it's this beautiful butterfly-like looking complex. And it fritters about through this type of process. It gets involved with, with this type of molecule. And via donation, it has the power to create molecular triangles with oxygen in them. And so I'm getting really excited to work on this because, cyclo because these types of triangular molecules, they're really cool and they have a lot of applications. Um, in everyday life. Finally, an element I have yet to have the privilege of working with, but I thought it would include because it has a cool backstory, is cobalt, which comes from the Germanic myth, the kobold, which are mischievous little minor sprites that, that, the, that go around causing chaos. And in this sense, we, you know, as you can see, cobalt goes and creates these crazy colorful molecules. We see it in things like cobalt glass, and its reactivity is very similar. It's hard to pin down. It's mysterious. It's elusive. And so I hope in the future I'll be able to have some interactions with cobalt and maybe try to stop it from being so mischievous. Um, so pretty much in conclusion, so these are just examples of some of the magic that I get to do on a daily basis uh, working here at Caltech. I hope what I've take, been able to show you is some of the backstory and history behind the elements, some of the superpowers that maybe you didn't know that they possess, and maybe I can encourage you to go out and be the next alchemist and discover your own superpowers within yourselves and with the elements of the world that we have the privilege to experience. And also, I hope I can take, give you the take home message that chemistry is magic, it is with everything we do. It's in medicine, it's in electronics, it's in your cell phone, all these elements, they all work together to do great things for us in society. Um, so thank you. And if you have any questions, let me know.